If you've ever bent a strip of tin or heard someone play around with a piece of soft metal, you might have caught something strange, a faint, high-pitched sound that almost resembles a squeak or even a cry. It's subtle, unexpected, and oddly fascinating. But it's not just your ears playing tricks on you. That sound is very real. It's what scientists and metal workers call the tin cry. And it raises a curious question. Why would a solid piece of metal make a sound when you bend it? Stick around as we dive into the mystery of the tin cry. What causes it, why it matters, and what it reveals about the hidden lives of metals. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with what it actually sounds like. If you take a bar or rod of pure tin and slowly bend it, you'll hear a distinct, almost squeaky sound, like someone softly scratching a window or a mouse chirping in the distance. That sound is known as the tin cry. And while it may sound like something alive, it's actually a result of what's happening deep inside the metal. The tin cry isn't exclusive to tin, but tin is the most well-known metal for this phenomenon. Other soft metals like indium or cadmium may produce similar noises, but tin is where we most often observe and study this effect. It's been known about for centuries, and it still fascinates metal workers, scientists, and engineers today. To understand why tin makes this sound, we need to look at what's happening on a microscopic level. Like all metals, tin is made up of crystals, a very ordered arrangement of atoms. When a metal is bent or stressed, these crystals move and shift. In most metals, that movement happens quietly. But in tin, the shifting of the crystals, also known as crystal twinning or slip, creates audible vibrations. These vibrations travel through the metal and into the air and our ears pick them up as sound. So what you're hearing when tin cries is essentially the sound of its crystal structure rearranging under stress. That's pretty wild when you think about it. You're not hearing a surface scrape or a mechanical squeak. You're listening to atomic structures on the move. So why don't all metals make this sound? The answer lies in the type of crystal structure the metal has and how easily its atoms can shift when pressure is applied. Tin, especially in its beta form, has a body-centered tetragonal crystal structure. When you bend or deform it, this structure doesn't glide as smoothly as those in harder metals like steel or copper. Instead, the shifts are more abrupt and those sudden movements generate sound waves. In contrast, Metals like aluminum or iron have crystal structures that allow them to deform more quietly. The atomic rearrangements still happen. They just don't produce audible frequencies. So the tin cry isn't something all metals are capable of. It's a special trait that depends heavily on the internal makeup of the material. Now let's talk about that name, tin cry. It might sound poetic, but it also creates a bit of a misunderstanding. The metal isn't crying like a living thing. There's no emotion involved, obviously. But the sound does have a haunting, squeaky quality that people in the past likened to crying or wailing. It's stuck. In fact, Tin's cry has been known since at least the 1500s, and alchemists and early metal workers used it as a way to tell whether they had pure tin or not. Even today, the tin cry is sometimes used as a kind of purity test. Impure tin or tin alloys don't make the same sound because their internal crystal structure has been altered by the presence of other metals. You won't hear the tin cry just by tapping a tin can or bending some old kitchenware. Most commercially used tin is mixed with other metals, like in solder or pewter which dulls or eliminates the effect. But with pure tin, especially in bar form, 
the cry becomes very noticeable when the metal is bent slowly and deliberately. It's most audible at room temperature. If the metal is too cold, it becomes brittle. If it's too warm, it may deform more easily, but the vibrations won't translate as clearly. So there's kind of a sweet spot where tin sings the loudest, and it happens to be in the temperatures we usually live in. So, is this phenomenon just an oddity, or does it have any practical use? To be honest, the tin cry is more of a curiosity than a tool. It doesn't serve a mechanical purpose, and it's not something engineers rely on when designing structures or machinery. But it's definitely helpful for identifying the material. Because only pure tin reliably produces this sound, it's a quick check for authenticity in certain settings. That said, it's also a vivid example of how the microscopic world of materials can become something you can feel, and even hear, in real life. That's rare and kind of magical, especially when most physical processes happen far below the level of human senses. While we're on the topic, tin has another strange quality worth mentioning, something called tin pest or tin disease. At very cold temperatures around minus 13 degrees Celsius or eight degrees Fahrenheit, Tin undergoes a structural change from its metallic form, beta tin, to a non-metallic powdery form, alpha tin. This transformation causes the metal to become brittle and break down. In historical contexts, this phenomenon was blamed for things like the disintegration of organ pipes in cold churches and even the failure of tin buttons on soldiers' coats during frigid winters. Combined with the tin cry, it gives the metal a bit of a spooky reputation in science history. Despite its quirks, tin is still incredibly useful. It's widely used in electronics, especially in solder, the substance that connects circuits together. It's also used in coatings to prevent corrosion, in alloys like bronze, and even in some forms of glassmaking. Tin's softness, conductivity, and resistance to oxidation make it ideal for these applications. And while its cry doesn't play a direct role in modern manufacturing, it's still a fun and surprising part of its personality. The tin cry is one of those delightful little discoveries that shows how rich and strange the world of material science can be. Who would have thought that bending a piece of metal could make a sound you can actually hear, all because atoms are shifting in just the right way. It reminds us that even the most ordinary seeming materials, the kind you might find in a toolbox or science lab, have stories to tell. And sometimes, if you bend them just right, they'll tell you out loud. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.